all of these different people in all of these different places connected by a common denominator of modern life. Tiny microprocessors that didn't exist 30 years ago, which are leading us into a new age. I'm correspondent Mike Saray. Join me and 100 of the world's top photojournalists on a global mission to show how the microchip is changing our world in the course of a single day. Intel Corporation is proud to bring you One Digital Day, a photographic journey around the globe that captures the amazing ways people use technology. In the past, we've done books where we took one day and looked at a culture in one country. And what we've done with this project is shown a, a, a technology that's now woven into the fabric of civilization in every corner of the globe all in one day. Photojournalist Rick Smola, the creator of the Day in the Life books and 24 Hours in Cyberspace, dispatched over 100 photojournalists on another global mission, this time to show how central microprocessors have become to everyday life everywhere. We purposely asked the photographers to go out of their way not to have people sitting in front of computers. What we're trying to show with this project is the effect this technology has on every aspect of human life. One of the problems of trying to do this in a single day around the world is you have to deal with the local weather wherever you are. It's not so good here in Shanghai, but since we have 100 photographers around the world on six continents, it's bound to be good weather somewhere. History. Today, it is happening all around the world. Pictures are being taken of modern computer technology. The 36-hour day began in Asia with a morning commute, a universal dilemma of modern life. One digital day solution in Bangkok was to work through it, as we discovered these executives doing in rented vans, equipped with the latest telecommuting tools. In Istanbul's morning commute between Asia and Europe, we found commuters using microchips on their prepaid transit rings and keychains to keep things moving. Good morning, good morning. Ivar Bohr was already at work in Norway, teleconferencing with his Stat Oil colleagues on remote oil rigs around the world while using the same technology to make sure his kids at home were up and starting their day. But one family got a graphic wake-up call on how important microprocessors are to their lives after photographer Peter Manzel spent the night laying out everything they owned with one on their front yard. Some of the more enlightening discoveries came in places and activities where they were least expected. In rural KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, the technology revolution arrives once a month, with the mobile banking trucks local pensioners and entire villages are totally dependent on for their government payments. To avoid the administrative delays and security problems of the past, these mobile banks use finger scanners and advanced biometrics to identify the recipients and their records for making cash payments on the spot. You know, since I've been here, you can see the technology, you know, popping up, you know, in some of the strangest places. You have the peasants coming here from the country working. You know, it's their first chance that they've ever seen, you know, been exposed to this technology. Photojournalist and Shanghai resident Fritz Hoffman started his digital day at dawn in one of Shanghai's morning markets, where he discovered Hei Dan Wu, the local butcher who never had a traditional telephone, but now has two cell phones and a pager. A classic illustration of the technology leapfrogging phenomenon sweeping through the new China. Hei Xiaoping's traditional one-room apartment for his family of three was a study in contrasts. It will never have running water, a bathroom, nor a telephone line. But the family can now afford some modern amenities, like the latest in home entertainment gear, the obligatory cell phone, and a PC for their son's education. Great pictures, but... Fortune's One Digital Day cover story dramatically illustrates how much business has changed. The impact of the new technologies has become the primary business story of our times. Our One Digital Day cover story is an example of a special event marketing opportunity made possible by our sponsors. Bell South, Hewlett Packard, iOmega, and Microsoft. At Fortune, we believe we have to be as innovative and responsive to these business changes as the companies we cover. 
In the South African bush, photojournalist Mark Peters discovered a unique breeding program for endangered cheetahs. It relies on storing a cheetah's vital genealogical information on small chips implanted in the animal and easily retrieved by scanners. So we can read off any animal and I can give you the records dating back to the very beginning who its great grandparents were. I think we're into fifth generation now. Anne Van Dyke is relying on these new information technologies in her role as the perfect matchmaker at her cheetah breeding center near Pretoria. The precise breeding protocols that rely on her extensive research and the cheetah chips have produced a stronger and more adaptable generation of cheetahs, which have recently escaped the endangered list. There's nothing nicer than to go and sit with Gillian up in the bush there and just let your thoughts flow. And that is why I find the laptop so useful. In the world of sports and the endless quest for speed and performance, today's race cars have been transformed into computer networks on wheels. In preparation for a race, pit crews now include systems engineers for analyzing critical engine, suspension, and aerodynamic data downloaded from computers strategically placed aboard the car. The race was already on in the Tour de France, where the racers' vital signs were being transmitted by body sensors to their chase teams. The smaller and more durable the microprocessors have become, the more ways athletes are using them in training and competition. The digital revolution has produced entirely new forms of entertainment, as photojournalist Andy Levin discovered in San Francisco, where a live actor was being digitally transformed into a cartoon character. Sergeant Neville Jordan never thought a video phone would play a part in his life, until one was set up at his base in Tuzla on this day, so he and his colleagues could connect with their families back in North Carolina. Hey. Watch his face, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Hey, baby. What are you doing? I miss you. I miss you, too. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Lose any more teeth? Uh-huh. Let me see. I see. The power of digital communication captured this day by photographers Lori Grinker in Bosnia and Cindy Burnham in North Carolina. I think even the people that work on these chips every day are going to be sort of astounded when they realize how their technology is reaching even the most remote corners of, uh, of people all over the world. For the record, more than 80,000 images were shot in 28 countries on six continents for one digital day. Photo editors from the National Geographic, Time, Fortune, and London's Sunday Times had the daunting task of selecting the best illustrations of the diversity of people and activities now relying on microprocessors. The fantasy of being able to hold a day in your hand that idea that all these pictures are happening relatively simultaneously in every corner of the globe is another way of showing and proving how ubiquitous this technology is. Join us at the One Digital Day section of Intel.com where we continue the journey with more stories and photos of the amazing ways people use technology.